Welcome to the sixth live stream of the Sailplane build. This is a build of the Multiplex Huron, and I've thus far gone through a few uh, cycles. I've only published the fifth and the sixth videos thus far. What these videos are is it's generally just uh, me turning on the webcam and screen capture, and uh, capturing the process as I build the hopefully ultimate FPV sailplane. The sailplane is going to have several cool functions functions and uh, abilities, uh, such as two video transmitters, it's going to have a video camera multiplexing system on there to choose between different camera streams, it's also going to host a companion computer, such as a Raspberry Pi, for me to do cool software-defined radio experiments with on board while in flight. Today, <coughs> if I uh, go to uh, the full screen, and uh, this, by the way, this stream might be cut short by webcam issues, thus far it's working. But uh, there's no guarantee this is going to last more than two minutes. <coughs> this is the canopy of the Multiplex Heron. What I've done over the weekend is I have tried to do some 3D modeling of this, or 3D reconstruction. Uh, this is a whole bunch of immaculate... Okay, <laughs> it looks almost Vincent Van Gogh. I've gone ahead and placed a tiny daub, or uh, brushing, of a dry erase marker on every single one of the cells, uh, you can almost see the Vernoli pattern that's created by the EPP particles in the molding process. And I just added a daub on each and every one of those. And uh, what I've done recently, today's experiment, is I've taped on the plastic transparent canopy as well. And what I'm going to try to do is capture this entire thing 360 degrees all the way around and try to just build up the entire volume and capture it once and for all. Let me show what's going on and why that's failed in the past few days of the weekend. Here, and I'm not going to interrupt the video camera, so it's just going to have to stay as a picture-in-picture -in, -picture in the lower right-hand corner. I have attempted several attempts at making a um, 3D model. So if we go to, say, let's view this surface here, let's build the surface model. I've actually uh, gained a few very close, uh, almost perfect, but not quite, captures of the canopy. One of the issues I'm having is that uh, I'm using that checkerboard, this build plate, or uh, you know, construction plate here, I think it's called a puzzle board or puzzle mat, and it's self-symmetric. It has tan 98765 down to 1, 1 to give up to 10, and then it's exactly 180 degrees rotationally symmetric. 10, 9, down to 1, and that's flummoxing the algorithm. Even though there's slight hints that this mat isn't... There should be hints. I even made a bunch of uh, trash, a bunch of uh, random marks on the grid to try to help the algorithm differentiate between rotational symmetry. That didn't happen. If I go back to triangulation and we just show triangulated points, um, these green pixels here, if I just increase pixel size, each one of these green pixels here is where it believes a camera shot was taken from. So each camera, basically. And all of these are supposed to be orbits. This was a 360-degree orbit. This was with, I think, 8 or 10 or 16 or 21 images, rather. It was only able to gather 11 cameras from that, which means that this is a terrible capture. And that was set to zero. That was a pruned set. If I do, I should have called this single orbit. So single rotation, single orbit. Matches zero. I guess that one wasn't good enough. Let's see. Show. Uh, I didn't go as far as triangulation. Then there, triangulation, let's show that. So here's another instance where I made a nice, very even, as well as I could, um, orbit around the entire part, but it only gets half of it. It thinks it's only 180 degrees instead of 360. And as a result, the capture fails because it thinks the part is actually where I have uh, certain pieces here sticking out. It thinks that those are all sticking out here as well. And uh, in this case, it didn't have enough information or data to really prove that, so that's empty. But uh, let's say if I go to this triangulation point, show triangulation points, there it is again. It only thinks it's a half orbit. And in the most recent, where I did the full entire set, that was a single rotation, but I actually did about four orbits from various azimuth angles as well. 
and this is where I do the multiple azimuth angles and it still thinks it is just one orbit or rather one half orbit and then another half orbit higher up so and in this case you can see it actually is constructing where you have that mm, extrusion or this projection coming out here which isn't actually coming out there it's actually this side so this is super annoying and did I go as far as making a surface? I didn't. This was the uh, higher density. So this is the most recent one I did. So you're trying to win points. By the way, this is called Regard 3D. It's a open source tool chain. It's basically tacking together nine or ten different open source libraries. And it's all by a single fellow. Um, let's see here. Roman Heinstand. Heinstand. I'm very appreciative of this guy and what he's made here. So this is pretty cool. But it is, uh, yeah, thus far fairly finicky. There were other attempts I made earlier prior to, uh, well, yeah, I basically tried to do the model with no brushes, no uh, fiducials, you can call them at all, on just a plain white background, and that wasn't generating anything. Having it attached to the build plate, I had actually taped it to this uh, build mat tray thing and rotated it very gently, it didn't work. Going outside for global lighting, for a, or as close to a global map lighting situation as I could, the problem I had was placing it on the ground with all the gravel. All the algorithm was doing was it was matching to the gravel. But I guess a quick view of what it does when we look at matching results, it's looking at different features back and forth between image and pairs. So when it finds, say, let's open preview window, show all of the points, let's take a look. So it's basically using different image classifiers, trying to find key points, trying to find patterns, trying to find pieces that are the same across different images. So here it's clearly choosing different points, but prior to me basically tattooing the part, I had a bunch of issues where, you know, it basically was seeing this as one white void. There was nothing being tagged at all on the actual part of interest. Anyhow, so I'm going to close this, and oh, I guess I might as well show a little bit of how this works. So when it gets correspondence, let's go rich, cost the fundamental. Here it's actually pulling, so say we have this number 7 has this tan and this green. So let's go look at the number 7 over there, and we should see a tan and a green. Yeah, there we go. There's the tan and there's the green. So it's finding correspondences between points. And uh, basically, by building up a whole bunch of these, we're able to get a 3D image. I, I would love to. This would be a rabbit hole to go down. And eventually, in my graduate studies, I'll probably confront this. This is a lot of math here, and I appreciate it. I would love to be able to master that. There's a lot of things to do. Anyhow, so let's collapse all of the sets. Today, we're going to basically get a new set of pictures, and we're going to start a new project. And uh, as I said at the beginning, the goal is to take our canopy, which has the camera. Okay, camera still is there. Good. The camera still is going. This while I'm at it, I might as well show some of the more recent innovations off on the script for sniffing airplanes. And I finally broke down and decided to get this thing called ADS-B scope. So this thing is basically plugged into port 30005, I believe, which is called the Beast formatted output, and now I can, in my leisure, look at different airplanes. What are you? I don't know what to, oh, Cape Air. Okay. Doesn't have the type, though. But there's an Embraer 190 right there. What's number three? Number three is this thing, which is American Airlines Flight 1902, which I guess we could look up online and figure out more about them. So yeah, even in the middle of the pandemic, there's plenty of airplanes going around. Anyhow, let's uh, head back to the build bench. So I have a few ideas. Um, now, as you saw in the algorithm, it is very sensitive to lots of little issues, such as if I don't have a completely opaque surface. Any kind of transparency means that the algorithm is going to see through the surface I want, which is the bubble, and it's probably going to see down into the little chair area. Where, oops, 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 I don't want to have that get marred. You know what I should do? Let's go. Ahead original K 
canopy protective foam. Let me just do that. So I also need to figure out how I'm going to mount this. If I'm going to reuse this build plate, which is amazing, I have to have some kind of scaling reference, and having the build plate here included in the 3D model is critical. I didn't quite show that off. Let's go back to MeshLab, actually. So quick jump back in the tool chain for pipeline. Once I have a model created here, so say from a single rotation, I create a surface. So let's show the surface here. Once I have a surface created, I can actually go to a program called MeshLab. So sending this over to MeshLab, I can rotate it and do stuff. There's, it's a very powerful tool, and I have no idea how to use a software program. But uh, I did figure out one critical thing, which is the ability to measure points. So if I go up to the tape measure here, um, if this ever, well, I have no idea what I'm doing. I think there's something about pressing escape with this. You press escape a lot when you're using this program. By the way, I'm sitting on my knees. Ouch, I need to get a chair. Okay. You know, I don't have to immediately demonstrate it. This is a tangent. But uh, basically, pressing on that tape measure, I can actually get measurements between different vertices. And I discovered the other night that it is remarkably accurate, taking out the calipers and measuring between this surface here and that surface, or the total from that opposite side face on that side to this side. It was six centimeters and seven centimeters, which means that these posts or extrusions are exactly one centimeter across, and that is exactly correct. So I was really quite thrilled. It works. But that was only after, only after uh, calibrating it of sorts, where I measured the distance from the grid here to whatever 10 inches down there, and then getting out the calculator and having to do some math, 25.4, 0 0.777. So I can't force the units here, or I haven't learned yet how to force this thing to do different units, but then I can scale it up after I found the ratio later on. Anyhow, once you have things scaled up or rotated here, which I'm still trying to figure out, I can take it to Autodesk Inventor. This is not scaled and rotated as I was doing in Mesh Lab. This was just as fast as I could get into Inventor, see what it looks like. So here is Autodesk Inventor looking at the .obj output. So the .obj output here um, goes into Inventor, and I the, here's the goal. I want to have this in Inventor such that I can then build up or reconstruct the entire part from extrusions, sweeps, blends, and whatnot. And uh, but I mean I've already determined that this is seven centimeters side to side or six centimeters patterned one centimeter. And anyhow, there's I'm thankful that the builders, the designer, whoever was a 3D modeler for the multiplex here, was very kind to use simple centimeter divisions for at least one part of this model. And uh, I hope to be able to reconstruct the rest of the canopy such that I'll be able to 3D print another canopy. Now, the reasoning for doing this is because I don't want to use this canopy. I don't want to use this guy here. Um, not um, without having the ability to reproduce it and to make other modules. It's not like if you're familiar with science fiction, uh, this is somewhat of an, an obscure fact, but like the Starship Enterprise actually had a completely removable and replaceable crew module, or uh, rather, not the saucer section, but the actual bridge piece, the bridge section with the ready room and um, the other, basically that entire level one, or um, deck zero, deck one, the bridge, was replaceable. That's what I want to do with the canopy um, for different experiments. Also, well, I want to, this is overly engineered. This is at a risk of really chewing up a lot of time when I have a lot of other things to do today. And forgive me if I'm being too verbose. Whenever I watch these streams myself, I'm like cringing all the time anyway. Anyhow, being too self-conscious just there, let's go ahead with the rest of this. So, by the way, I might as well show off even more. I have one DigiKey order that arrived over, arrived over the weekend. So this is a DigiKey order for different harnessing. So I have here, I'm not sure if this is going to show up. There we go. Yeah, I've got uh, aerospace grade hookup wire. I've got this, uh, oops, this sheathing here, or sleeve, various resistors, and uh, connectors. 
And here's the pigtail. This is going to be the pigtail to the Raspberry Pi. And it's going to feed the video from the Raspberry Pi to my video mixing and distribution board. This is basically the video distribution board. I have another order which has a bunch of ferrites. And then, um, lo and behold, the uh, IC that I ordered from DigiKey, which was an analog devices video amplifier, video amp. It wasn't any good, and so I had to make a second order the same day for a Texas instrument part. Anyhow, let's get right back to the whole point of this feed for now, which is, you can see here, I'm in experiment mode, chemistry. I have here Trader Joe's liquid soap. I've also got some coca powder, and then uh, I also have flour here. And uh, basically, I'm going to try to paint the surface non-destructively. If I had some kind of wall water-soluble paint, I would do that. I don't feel like going out, especially in the middle of a pandemic, to try to find an art store that's open, or Walmart, or I don't know if Home Depot would have some kind of water-soluble paint. Instead, I'm just going to do the crazy thing, which is I know that this dish soap here has to be fairly safe and benign when applied to this. I don't know if this is polycarbonate. It's some kind of a uh, vacuum molded part here, and I definitely don't want to harm it because, you know, non-destructive. So I have my paintbrush here, the paint palette, and what I'm going to try doing, I have two ideas. The first idea is to just mix paint-wise a whole bunch of coca powder with soap and to brush that onto this canopy. The second idea that I'm probably going to go with is let's just drape a whole bunch of soap on the canopy and then puff or slather on coca powder. I don't know what I'm doing. Actually, you know, while I'm at it, let's just do both. So I'm going to mix a good dollop of liquid soap there. And I'm going to be right back with a spoon, or I can just, you know, I should go get a clean spoon or spatula to drape in a whole bunch. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> the soap is so transparent. So I found out earlier that coca is so super that I haven't had coca for so long. Let's just, instead of going to the kitchen to get a spoon, let's just do that. There we go. This is utterly ridiculous. It's forbidden chemistry or just ugh, ridiculous chemistry. I'm basically mixing in coca powder with soap. That is probably something no one has ever done before. So I had to improvise. Um, let's stir this. I don't want to use the hobby blade. Let's use the... Let's use that. Now I'm probably being too verbose, so I'm going to probably just lay off of the dialogue, turn off the debug statement verbosity, and I'll just let it be a nice quiet video feed while I do this ridiculous alchemy here. Also, I think I'll share this with family and friends. I think I've super saturated that. That is very, very saturated paste of coca. Now I have no idea if coca is going to harm the canopy. That's where I got the idea is let's just um, put on the soap first and then um, puff, puff on or brush on the coca. The whole point of this is I have to make this uh, completely opaque and it has to be uh, textured enough that the algorithm will be able to find key points that are each unique. So basically I have to add a whole bunch of noise to the surface that isn't so noisy, not so high frequency, that the algorithm doesn't work. So, what on earth am I doing to this poor paintbrush? Will this paintbrush ever be normal? I mean it's dish soap and coca. Coca can totally be washed out, right? I guess we'll find out. So there's my it almost looks like brownie mix. It is brownie mix. Ugh, forbidden brownie mix. So, you know, I'm just going to put it over there. I have no idea how this is going to dry either. I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's just go for this. This is the wrong kind of paintbrush. I need the larger paintbrush. Let's just go for it. So, here we go. I'm really going to do this. Is there any kind of test section I can do? Or am I just going to go for it? I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. 
you know, this is too transparent. It's um, draping this on. I don't know if it will be able to dry fast enough. And if it does dry, is it going to be transparent? It's an emulsion, by the way. I believe you call this an emulsion when you mix something in with soap. Maybe not an emulsion, probably. I said I was going to turn on the debug statement, but I can't stop commenting on my own experiment here. Yeah, this is this is ridiculous. And putting it on with a paintbrush, this is utterly ridiculous. You know what I might just do? Why not just by hand, because my hands are clean, and my hands should be soft enough to not mar the uh, plastic here. The, the rule is, is the, the way I'm going to make, if I am going to completely etch or destroy the canopy's beautiful finish, it's going to be by mechanical action. Therefore, I should only use water or the softest of materials to rub in the coca onto the canopy. And, uh, and this is too time intensive for all the other things I have to do today, such as build the video distribution amplifier. I have to eventually cover the wings. Not to mention, I have all my other projects I have to do, such as software defined radio work for contracting and trying to finish the VTOL and preparing to move out of this place since I finally found someone to take my room even in the middle of the pandemic. For some reason this reminds me of Star Wars or something. Okay. You know what? This is going to do just fine. This is fine. Okay. Yeah. Is there any way to prove that this isn't boring the surface? Nope. I guess I'll find out after I wash this. Just going to hand wash the canopy. And. You know what? The lighting on this isn't consistent enough. Maybe once it's completely covered, that will dissipate, but for now, while there's light coming in through here and then bouncing up through the material, it's, uh, yeah. I wonder what the Dr. Carlo Niza here, whatever his name is from Two Minute Papers, would think of this for trying to model this in computer graphics. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Ha! <laughs> of all the ridiculous things. Okay. Now, once I have this done, how am I going to mount it? I'm going to have to figure out a way to mount it on a stick or a post temporarily. I'll not be able to mount it off of the painted surface, so it'll have to be on the film side. I'll have to find one of the more quiet areas that I'll be able to reconstruct by hand where I'll have a stick sticking out. Sort of like how you have the Insta360 cameras. They have some kind of a post or something that have to be edited out in post, or they have an algorithm that removes the uh, supporting rod from the uh, view that they construct. Now, the flower, uh, my original idea was like, why not just cover it with gravy? So that's why the flower is here. I have this brown, and I will be able to speckle on white flower, like even swirl on swirls of flower, whatever it takes to make a very um, unique and high information surface. Utterly ridiculous. I'm not sure the designers of the multiplex, I don't think any RC airplane designers would ever imagine that someone would be painting their product with a essentially chocolate soap paste. 
Okay. Yeah, there still is too much light transmission through and from behind. There. Also, because it's raining outside today, I'm not going to be able to go outside to exactly you know. So I'm just going to do sort of a hybrid between the two. I'm going to have to get up and wash my hands after this, but let's lather on the soap. And now, close my fingers and try not to Uh, how ridiculous this is. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Uh, 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 I already lost it. Dang. So I'm going to have to find a way to dry this. Okay. This is ridiculous. Now it's getting all over. Okay. Here. How is that? If that could kindly dry quickly, that is approximately what I want. Though it is still too mudgy. I need to have sharper surfaces. I need to have much higher definition. That's what um, tapping this will do. And also just taking... Oh, oh there goes chocolate on the... Okay, I did not think this through very well. Okay, I don't want chocolate on the foam. I can let the build plate get it. And then I have chocolate on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, uh... You know, what would happen if I daubed this with the... Uh, would daubing this add high frequency noise to it with sharp edges? Okay, let's get that off. Ha! Okay. Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. There goes the tattoos or Van Gogh surface, but uh. Okay. I think that's uh. I think that's fair. Okay. Let's try to get that covered. I wish I could give it sharper edges. You know, I saw this on YouTube. It was a uh, water art based thing where they actually put a uh, pattern of oil, paint and oil on the surface of the water and then they dip the whatever they're painting into the water and the oil just sticks to the surface as it gets sucked down with the part off via surface tension. Now that would be interesting to try to replicate here. Okay. So, now if that would kindly dry, um, there is some translucency to this. I, I guess if I do multiple layers, okay. what I don't want, what I don't like, is having it to dribble down like that. It's going to be getting all over everything. I don't want to ruin the prior tattoo. And I guess the tattoos can be placed back on easily enough by hand, but I'd probably rather not disrupt the tattooed surface. And then there it goes. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, 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 don't want to do that. Yeah, I can probably put on another layer. And uh, as long as it's, yeah. 
Okay, I need to find a way to prop this up and allow it to dry while I go wash my hands off and try to wash off everything else and not trample it on it. So let's use the dish of soap as a very precarious layer. Okay. That'll do, but I still see translucency. Anyhow, I uh, will be right back. Okay, well, hmm. well, that's doing it. Let's put that right next to the dryer. You need to change your loop, carefully grab that. And I'm going to set this to get dried off.
And there's the devils. This should do. Seven or eight? Oh, okay. What? How many of these did I order? I feel bad for the technician of Digi who had to take pack and label every single one of these. I shouldn't feel bad, it's their job, but fairly tedious, I imagine, for my individual requests of every single little connector. One of them got. I have an orphaned one. How did that happen? Just ordered two when I meant to order one. Ah, nuts. <laughs> the odd one's out. Sorry. Okay. Really? Good day.
than my choice. This is already an option. Try and do this. So, minor disaster down my got yet orphans. I have yet still orphaned connectors. So, but at least I have a whole bunch of nice pairs now. Connectors to last for hopefully this and whatever the next project is. Let's uh, turn on the soldering iron. Yeah, it almost seems fair for me to just, it's, it's just throw the Molex in their own baggie, including the orphan ones. Now, before I get to that, let's just go through resistors, capacitors, and more resistors. Stupid. Seven or eight bucks, or six bucks, I think, for the wrong one. Okay, and I, I, I might have gone, could have gone the other one. So that's ready to go. One that should be facing today. Now let's look at this. And by the way, I thought I had. Yeah, there we go. I knew I had more of you. Okay, so these are ready to go. Let's uh. Oh Lord. Ah. Adafruit electric mic amp with automatic gain control. And I don't even need the header, I was just going to do this directly. Let's decide how to do this. I can use. It's uh, AR. What's AR on this thing? Let's actually look at the data sheet, but I'd really love to just do three wires. V plus G is for ground, I guess. Gain, okay. And if gain is floating, then it's the highest. If it's grounded or VDD, that changes it. Output is 2 volts peak to peak max, which isn't line level. Shouldn't that, in order to be. And then DC offset is 1.25 volts. As long as I just put it through a uh, capacitor, I should be safe, right? Anyhow, let's uh, get the scissors. And this shall be the main microphone. Now, why did I turn on the soldering iron? You know what I'm going to have to do? Let's turn off the soldering iron. My plan was actually with this cable, which should be nicely shielded. Yeah, they actually did a nice job with the terminated too. But um, yeah, I'm going to take that cable, and it's got a total of four conductors. So I can have four of the five lines here. So either I can pipe out the gain or whatever AR is. What on earth is AR? What is AR? Audio. Hmm. Do I want to put a mic in the wing? I was thinking this would probably be in the fuselage proper. No, I'm not going to run the wire in the wing. This is going to look like a slush. 
uh, here in the airplane. Let's go check out what the airplane situation is. Looks like almost all the fun are dashing to the window to look at the nearest airplane. So that's what's flying over your head. Cape Air. Cessna 401, 402. Okay. Now there aren't any general aviation airplanes out there except for these little guys. So then all the fruit. Let's see if I have it uh, still here. Okay, it's just here. Mm -hmm. What was this? It was the. Mm, let's just grab that. Uh, 9811 form is going to be lazy. Oh, that's no good. Mm, okay, that's fine. Let's try there. W9385. Oh, seriously? How about P1713? Aha, that's what I want. So tell me about what this thing does. Attack release. Ah, AR is probably attack release. What? Ah, typo. I don't know what the uh, audio input in. It probably should. It probably already has a capacitor on the audio input for the VTX, but I would I'd love to be sure. The VTX though doesn't have much. Let's actually go to that. Please. RC. This is one that I had, and they don't tell you exactly what that. Yeah, it only tells you audio. That's all it tells you. Info. Nope. As usual, and there's no manual or anything. So if I had an LCR meter, which I don't. Uh, I have an oscilloscope though, and I can probably try to look up a function generator, or I can just measure the DC properties of it. Let's just measure the DC properties of the audio input line. So, for the moment, let's put this back. It's here to receive the wing. Isn't actually a static baggy at all. Yeah, all that's going on. So here it is, and that's dried on. Okay, I can make that work if I put down another coat of chocolate, another coating of chocolate soap mush. will probably make this sufficiently uh, opaque and hmm, it still needs to go on much thicker. I need a much thicker layer. So let's let's do that but uh, first. Well, I should record this somewhere. Let's see. Ah, okay. Yes. 
so schema what's this utensils type will change that to white thank you so our VTX I don't have any information really encoded about these inputs and I probably should visible in the window? Okay, just about. Okay. Um. So let's gather at least the DC characteristics. be the 5 wire and according to this so pin 1 is that guy pin 1 is ground okay and then right next to it is video and so let's measure what video in is that should be 75 ohms and there we have 71.5 ohms okay and then audio inputs are usually pretty high impedance, 500 to maybe 10k. So that's the next one, is audio in. And this is positive with the ground, just a negative lead. And that, it must be capacitively coupled because that says OF overflow. Or actually, I've never figured out what OF means. Open circuit. And let's just check. Baseline is zero or 0.1 ohms. Okay. So let's go again. And be absolutely sure I'm actually touching. And yeah, let's try capacitive mode just out of curiosity. It's not going to be a very valid measurement, but let's try it anyway. Into this, it's about a one microfarad. It's a 834 nano. Farads. Okay, so that means I can probably get away with taking the audio from the Adia Fruit device and I can have it go directly to the uh, audio input on this guy without any kind of capacitive coupling since it already is capacitively coupled. As far as transmission lines are concerned, I don't think it should make much of a difference. The, the error would be to have a capacitor on top of another capacitor to have it capacitively coupled twice would not be wise. Okay. So let's go back to painting. So more art. back to the uh, kitchen to grab the stuff in the sink. By the way, out of curiosity, does anyone watch this live stream and is anyone commenting on it? Nope. Okay, that's fine. 
if you're uh, watching this live stream like uh, weeks, months, or years from now, I don't know, go ahead and uh, put in a chat message. I don't know if anyone ever watches this, it's mainly to keep myself focused, but I am pushing this publicly, so I'm hoping that this will um, this will be helpful, not just to me. Anyhow, it's mainly practice, to be honest. Me trying to practice exhibiting and showing off better. That's a piece of tape that's lifted up because of that. And I'm just going to turn it off. And here I do that with the dikes. I'm going to try it with the end dikes. Simple and as consolidated a surface as I can. Okay. So it's too dry for me to try to hit it with flour, but uh, let's try soap again. The soap is too wet. I need something that dries it off really quick. I need almost chalky. It needs to almost be chalk. And yeah, let's do the coca again. All the weird things I've had this hobby knife do. I even have to fully incorporate it. I'm just gonna go with it barely incorporated just to give it as bizarre and as textured a surface as I can. I think dabbing it on is better. Rachel, if you're watching this, I'm sure you could give me some art advice. Piece of hair or super or hot glue in there, all the more the merrier. I can do to add texture to this and make it as opaque as I can. Now let's just do long broad strokes rather than spot.
there's some kind of a spray paint. It's a water-based, water-soluble spray paint. I would have totally done this. It's just ridiculous. Why are they ridiculous? Okay, let's add more soap. What if I spritzed this with water? I wish I had a spritzer. I had a water spritzer. I had to spritz it with water and that would reactivate the soap and cause it to weep. And uh, hopefully, this is ridiculous. Okay. It's not uh, trans. Oh, it's not opaque enough.
Mm -hmm. More. <sighs> oh, I didn't have to get the camera full screen. So. Ah, uh, I should have just been doing this with the inverse this whole time. There we go. That's what I want. Aha. Uh -huh. okay. And my fingerprints should offer lots and lots of texture. I should have done this finger lice the whole time. Okay. There we go. That's much better. I think I'm just going to just stick with my fingers. I hope it will be able to solve all of this. Right here in our plane, so to quickly go take a look. Where are we going? Mm -hmm. That's 
5,200 feet up, and it's number three, which is here better. Thank you. Now it's rubbing off. I want to stick to it. There we go. That feels good. Atrocious. I think that'll have to be sufficient. That's just gonna have to do it. And um, fortunately, it's uh, getting all of the uh, tape that's holding it down is starting to lift off. I don't want that to happen. As soon as that dries, I'm gonna have to get some more tape on there and see if I can get it to stick. has been super abused. This is not what the brush signed up for. It's not exactly doing an amazing piece of art, but that is ugly. 
mildly opaque and hopefully I'll be able to get a really good scan off of this. Let's place that on the uh, heater to let it get dried. This will go into dishes. I'm going to wash this off at the sink. With just dish detergent, obviously. Okay. So it's like seven seven seven. Slight modification. So with the webcam, I'm so pleased that it's lasted that this is like a one in twenty chance that it actually stays stable this long. I'm gonna do this so that way I can do desktop only. So let's move into the design phase of things. There's a few things I have to design. around. Okay. Okay. 
right, so next goal, I have this nice camera here that I'd like to model. Or at least I'd like to verify that the current model I have in Nordisk Inventor is sufficient, and if it isn't, then I have to make a new one. So let's go to our part. Alrighty, I'm going to put you Steve's documents, Inventor, Steve, and main library and a huge mess of stuff all pushed in here. Let's go through and find P, Q, and R for Runcam. Where did I put you? There we are. Runcam Microsoft V3. This is the most modern or the most recent camera that I've modeled. I've always been into Runcam, but now Foxier has actually uh, somewhat uh, thrown my allegiance. Foxier and Runcam seem to be in a dead heat in the FPV camera market, and I wonder if Foxier is even slightly ahead. I selected this is the Foxier. I'll just show it here. If that can show up. Come on, man. You got it. There we go. So that's a fox here, toothless, as in how to turn a dragon toothless the dragon. Toothless 2, 1200 line camera. And it's designed, or it's marketed as a superb night camera. And the footage that I saw for it seems to verify that. It's got a stupid multimeter, or not multimeter, micrometer. Watch this. I can't make up its mind. Are you 5 or are you 0? If I swing it back and forth, back and forth. No, I think it's five. You pill. You absolute pill. And then the, yeah, the zero button gets stuck. I so ashamed to own this caliper. Okay. Anyhow, let's verify what we've got. And by the way, I don't even own the Micro Swift. That was basically derived basically completely artistically everything here on the screen this entire design was completely my own interpretation based on their uh, dimensions and side drawings that they had available online so I just wanted to verify it's not worth modeling this camera in Autodesk Inventor if the current model I have is sufficient so taking a look at this so if I take that and say okay there's a camera how long is this thing? Now, what I have here articulated is a non back shelled, non sealed camera, wherein it has basically a circuit board and then a piece of uh, plastic that covers it. But I'm just going to, all I need when I model this, okay, that says 23 millimeters. Now, I really could go to the Fox here website to verify this. But you know, I'm just going to do this. 24.7. It's close enough. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get too upset about that being slightly off. And it's close enough. The back connector. Yeah, good enough. Um, alrighty. The next important measurement is what are we on the sides? So that's 22, and I believe that's exactly what the specs for the camera said as well. It might even be in this little thingy here might even have it but uh let's let's restart our measurement and let's go from this face to this face and that's 19 okay so this is slightly bigger so i am going to have to it also has these mounting holes here in the side too i'm actually sort of stressed out right now i don't want to have to do this right now but it needs to be done i have to Okay, how much of this I can't derive along? Okay, well, I guess this is a good opportunity to show how I designed this camera. And I think I may have even done this in a previous stream, like even a year ago, one of my private non-listed streams. Um, there we go, move into part marker. So when you make a 3D model, at least the way I was taught and then I've taught myself, is you generally want to have as much detail captured in the base sketch or initial sketch as possible, the fundamental sketch. So this basically captured a lot of the side profile. I think I determined that it was going to be a revolve, and then it was going to be a cylinder heading out like that, and I captured that. And then for me to replicate the lens, um, 
I mean, everything here, this entire jag and such, this is all completely made up such that artistically it looks like it's actually uh, that cool effect when you look in there and you see the optics. So I basically have to, in order to make a nice photogenic, nice looking camera in the program. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Really? That was a field of view, I believe. But yeah, here you can see it looks like you're actually looking into the lens. So minus, let's get rid of all the surfaces and axes and I just forgot how do you clear uh, rid of view? Where it? Object visibility, that's what I wanted. So use your work planes, work points. What are you? I want to make that surface go away. So that's actually this is what I'd have to do. Which I can just go to surface bodies and say go away. So visibility, but then it makes the purple hue go away. So Note to self, don't save this, Steve. Oh yeah, I guess it's just edge visibility. So if I go to edges, I want to just do shaded. There we go, that looks pretty nice. And then if we go back to edges, then... Okay. Anyhow, where was I? So for this camera, I just want to reuse this model. Why can't the industry decide on or standardize? I don't feel... This is a lot of work. This is another tangent I don't need. Quite honestly, painting the canopy is a tangent I don't need. All this is one huge tangent. I'm getting down on myself. But I'm just like, seriously, if I wasn't trying to quickly add the camera... Here's a list of things. Let's, let's just enumerate this. So, list of things that I hate. So, finish the plane. Okay, what are the things necessary for me to get this plane finished? I have to glue... Okay, for me to glue the fuselage shell together, I have to... Which means I have to solder on... And I have to also and then what else is sticking out of that? Isn't that it? That's all that's sticking out of the tail. Oh well, the servos. Um, Okay, so that's what else do I have to do to glue the fuselage shells together to finalize the tail harness? Um, Which means I have to cover the wings, which means I have to Uh. 
I was looking into static wicks, so I'd gone on a tangent wondering about how uh, static discharge wicks work in aircraft. I don't know if that's necessary on a small UAV, but I've never seen it. But I'm wondering if that's necessary. I don't think it might be flying through precipitation. I'm just wondering if what killed the Calypso four years ago might have been static discharge buildup. It's hard to measure, especially on a small airplane. Most general aviation airplanes don't have static wicks either. Anyhow, um, how do you spell incorporate? C O R P I can't spell. That's why you have to spell check. I'm an engineer. Incorporate under features. This is ridiculous. What else am I trying to accomplish? Oh man. Um, What have I accomplished? So the pedo has been mounted, all of the wing harnessing is done, tail harnessing is done, tail VTX is mounted, oh um, yeah, covering the wings. So to cover the wings, test covering the tail wing scheme, seal, number, tape, what else do I need to do? That's going to be an entire day with the hot iron. I'm adding complexity that I don't need to. It would be possible to finish the sailplane without covering the wings. It would also be possible to finish it without the stack discharge wicks. It's all a learning project, basically, but uh, I'm in extreme overtime. Glue, let's chill together, finish the tail harness. There's a lot of stuff. There's also, well, the current tension that I'm on, by the way, basically is install my which means I have to preserve the original canopy Okay. I can't spell. That looks wrong. The more you look at that sideways, don't. How is that a word? You overanalyze a word and you're like, that, and you just get weirded out. Or side a slight form of dyslexia. Anyhow, I have a hand tilt. Okay. 
that's where I'm at right now. <sighs> yeah, it's been quite fun. You know, working. Oh yeah, by the way, install Raspberry Pi. That's what you're looking for. Okay. This is something I can say is done. Sweet. Okay. So you spell. Okay. And And then I have to. That's another to do list item is. This is gross. I'm still using minimum OSD, which is five to seven years old. side to count as well. There is so much to do here. 3 modeling the canopy is an entire day alone. Hmm. And this is finishing the sailplane. Well, finishing means to test So there is so much to do. So there's build. And then there's also the entire side project of which is Keyboard smash. Man, this is a lot of work. Oh yeah, there's another issue too. Build, flight, test. Um, I'm still in the design, which is um, main area again. Cord, neutral point. Pressure, center of lift. That's sort of all in the wrong order. There's so much to do. Yeah. This is where I get the sense that I just need to hire someone to do all of this. Or to do part of this. This is <laughs> this is so much work. Hmm. Coming up in an hour and 40 minutes. I need to get lunch. But before I do that, let's just focus on how I could simplify my life. What are some of these tasks that I can skip or that I can put off for later? If I want to get a flying sailplane as soon as possible by the end of this week, I need to do the following. Do I really need to cover the wings? Can that wait for a later time? I can always cover the wings later. All I have to do is give the minimum amount of tape on the bottom along with the wire routing to make sure the wires don't fall out. 
And then I can skip a lot of this. All of that, really. I don't have to cover the wings with the nice covering. It would be nice, but that can actually wait for later when the silk wings are ready to build. Gluing the fuselage cells together, I do need to finish soldering the harness and bundles. Um, constructing the harnessing board. All I need to do, I don't have to make a complicated board that holds the video max and the OSD and the distribution amplifier. That can all just be sort of bundled together and flashed with tape. I'd wanted to make something nice, but it's... I really just have to make the distribution amplifier using the boards that I got, those little proto boards. And then I'll have the max and everything else just sort of... I can mount those all on a piece of cardboard, basically, or another piece of FR4, and that can be the tray that holds it all. Um, not to mention I have all of the RF chokes and shielding and stuff that I have to do with that, too. I wonder if I need to make a miniature metal enclosure for that, or just wrap it all with aluminum foil. What a mess. Okay, so... As to here... Do I really need to be modeling the camera right now? To make a custom pan tilt system? Well, yeah, I'd like to. Let's put this back there. Let's take a look at how it's doing. Chocolate covered. <laughs> okay. It still has reflective um, components. So it still isn't ideal, it's not perfect. But uh, if I can get it in an appropriate lighting situation, this side is actually a lot more translucent than this side is. Well, to have how is this thing being held on the canopy is barely even held on right now I need to be careful okay. and I need to figure out a way to post it to I'm getting worn out. There, I'm just getting worn out right now with the amount of work I have to do. Do I have time estimates for this? Constructing the video board is going to be about an hour. In an hour, verifying things can be joined, which is just a the wires, actually got the wings. Each of these broad categories here is an entire day. Entire day, probably an entire day, two days, maybe three. This is basically the entire week. And I am leaving Boston Saturday. Do I really need to leave Boston? Anyhow. It's safe to say that that's a revolution. It looks spherical. I don't see any aberration that would indicate a noise. Yeah, that's. So that, that holds. So I moved that and then I had that extrusion in there. Let's 
Is that a cat exclusion? What was that exactly? Hmm, yeah, it was. So I don't have to do the other extrusion there, I just have to do the... Am I lucky enough that it doesn't join? Actually, is uh, Side profiles are not the same. Hmm. That's a straight cut. That has the so that so I do that. Okay. Well, let's do this. I'm going to first of all close this because an obsessive compulsive no do not save anything I just did. And let's reopen that. I'm going to save it as. So file, and I would love to save you as, and save a copy as. I'm going to call you the fox here. Toothless two. Okay. Why redo something from scratch when you have it basically right there? Okay, yeah, that was really ridiculous. I could have just saved as instead of save copy as, but uh, let's just. Okay, so I'm trying to preserve. Hey, and that totally is a keepable thing, and I'm not going to bother. Did I bother? No, okay, and it's a. Oh well, let's roll you back to hear about. And this is where the two camera designs diverge. And this extrusion does happen, this one does not. Because those are right there. Okay, so I can delete you safely. And now it's screaming at me. Oh, look at that. Wait, that's not a picture of the camera. Where did that come from? Image. Image of what? Hello. Yeah, whatever. So let's go to sketch one. Let's really go to sketch one. It. What are you? Update. Uh, properties. Um, like how do I configure? What are you? How? Um, no way to double clicking. I have no idea why the servo got picked up rather than it would be a image with. Well, that's not a tangent I need to go down right now. Let's just control Z that. Never mind, bud. I don't want to touch it. Just. Go away, I don't want the picture. And uh, yeah, let's edit the base. So all I've done at this point is I've revolved. Okay, so let's do this. Our camera. Ah! I hope I didn't hurt it. These are fairly fragile devices. Okay. So the important bit here is that while I can extrude it that way, there is a cut coming from the side here. That's how is that not pegged down? I am always so faithful in trying to keep things properly pegged down, but uh, what's going on here? Why why did I get lazy? I guess it's because it's completely artistic, but uh, nonetheless, that really should be nailed down.
Wait a second. Why are you able to be... Okay. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Okay. So, as long as it's underneath that... Okay, let's just do this. I'm going to peg this down. And same for these. You're not... Well, I'm going to make you. You are henceforth doing that. I can't find anything that you're... Oh, you would be very nicely that way. Okay. Now I just can't figure out what to do with you. You look like you're aligned, actually. I am going to be lazy and say you are on there. And then I just have to figure out some line running around here that is fair enough to... I can't. Wait a second. Hmm. If I did the midpoint here, I'm going to do the lazy option. I'm going to say there's a midpoint here that goes here, and there's the midpoint there. That's not good enough. Okay, let's just oh, let's do this. That did look fairly close. Very close, actually. Okay, let's say that your midpoint there, close enough. Everything's nailed down. Five dimensions needed because the pictures in the background. I'm just gonna delete that. Um, delete. One dimension needed. Where? How has one escaped? One has escaped. Where is it? Okay. Show degrees of freedom. Where to go? Oh. You're concerned because that right there is the yeah, you know, that's that's why that's why you're upset. Okay. And I I do want that to generally let's just do a construction line that goes to here. There we go. Well enough, fully constrained. So now I can modify this so that there isn't this, um, this larger element there. You're not on there anymore. I want you to stand off. Hey, 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 come on. Okay, get rid of and then pull. There we go. I'm actually going to duplicate that twice. I could do that as an explicit operation where it says pattern across whatever, but here in this case I'm just going to make a, a friend for it that is going to be equal. And this is why I love Inventor over SolidWorks. It's just so much quicker to do anything. SolidWorks you have to go to the sidebar and then you have to click for construction and it's just a, an atrocious mess that I'm sure people who are only brought up on SolidWorks are in love with. Autodesk, I love you guys, and this is a shout out to them. Autodesk is awesome, and I want to see them thrive. And when I finally go into business one of these days with a nice operation and such, I'm so using Autodesk over there. I appreciate their. Um, by the way, why don't I just go to. Okay, we are going to Fox Seer, and I want to go to 2 plus 2 mini. Mini Micro Nano. Mini, that's this one. Good. I, I didn't want to race a quad, so I wanted Fox here proper. Though, do you guys have the side? If, if you guys have the artwork I'm looking for. No, you don't. By the way, I'm coming up on two hours, and it looks like I'm just going to stick with the, the stream, even though just a matter of minutes ago, I was just about done with this. I was just like, I'm tired. Let's go get lunch. But now I'm like, you know, let's just actually go for it. And now I'm thoroughly engrossed. So. It's, uh, Let's try this again. Fox, uh, Fox here, uh, Fox here. There we go. Legend one, Legend two, drum racing, whatever. Uh, other than my faux pas, where I had the packing slip and the Wiki order here in the camera feed, I don't think I have any personal identifying information thus far presented. Um, other than mentioning that I'm in Boston and the uh, home location is pegged, but I mean, this still doesn't give you enough information about where my home is. 
mean, that's very grossly not, not quite. That's mercury. That's oh, ERJ. It's whatever. Um, box here, action hands. Hey, action hands, cool. Um, knife line, sure. I never actually have gone through their micro caps. Hmm. They look just like the Tiflos 2. What is this? No noise. No latency, no noise. Um, just go to FPV cameras. I didn't actually know there was a. I wonder if that's brand new as of just. They're constantly pushing out new cameras, and that's really frustrating. Ooh, no. Actually, I am curious to look at that. Mini and micro. So, yeah, mini. I would have gone for that if I'd known that existed, but race day quads doesn't even. I wanted to do. Like, if you go to race day quads, it's whatever they have. Cameras, all cameras. They're not going to have the cat camera, are they? The tangents upon tangents upon tangents. So. There. And that's the same bracket I've got. It's the same form factor. Hmm, basically the same as the Toothless 2. Aha, uh -huh. and this... This is what I would probably... You know while we're at it? Okay. So the Toothless 2 is going to have that. Hey, come here. What are you doing? Full weather, which is your Toothless 2 mini. That's what we want. So, full weather Toothless 2, which basically also has the ability to go down to... Um, 100 microlux. Hey, wait a second. Why don't you say that? You need to explicitly say 100 microlux. Uh, specifications. There it is. 100 microlux, which is just the same as the cat. So, why isn't the cat. What is this? Professional night FPV camera. Hmm. Black and white is that color? Is that interesting? So Sony one third inch versus the one half inch. Twelve hundred lines versus uh, twelve hundred lines. Switchable. You know, I'm just curious. So yeah, Fox here. As I mentioned at the beginning, about 10, 20 minutes ago, run cam has always been my favorite for at least since 2015-ish, but now, oh, look at that. I could have ordered this, and that's the Micro Cat Mini. I would have gladly barfed up another $10 for an even more capable night camera, because I like flying at night, but I'll take the full weather camera, whatever. So this is the state-of-the-art camera that I've got. And uh, I'm very thankful for this. This is very nice having, at least while the pandemic hasn't totally crashed the global economy, it is still possible to buy these parts. It's frustrating that they're made in China. I wish there was an American variant, and there probably is, but probably is only for military or industrial, and it probably costs 10 to 20 times more. Which is super dumb. Uh, So, uh, yeah, cat there. No one, is anyone even watching the stream right now? No one's watching. Oh well. Mm, where was I? Done there. And I can totally pull this into Autodesk Inventor. Or do I, do I really need to spend that much time trying to do this? I'm not even going to fully honor this. I'm just going to go with my measurements of 22. Uh oh, dropped 644 frames. I've never seen that in the stream. Why did he drop frames? By the way, I hear an airplane. A bear. And here comes another one that's much higher. So, anyhow, this just verifies what I can see right here in person. But I wanted to see the bolt hole locations. So, this says. 6.3 millimeters offset and displaced 7.7. .7. So, 
so and so 7.7 and 6.3 actually let's just apply it to the line rather than point to point 6.3 and those were m2 mm -hmm. which I'm just going to make this 2 millimeters okay so that solves that and then 22 which means well that that will be applied later on, but I need to get a good sense of what this conical, almost parabolic, is, a, is it a section of a sphere or is it a parabola? I'm not really sure, and it doesn't really matter, especially for surfaces that only has to be generally curved and convex. That's really all I'm modeling. I'm not going for exactness. It just needs to look like a nice convex surface. It's not worth the amount of time. Um, Wait, are there two different cameras going on? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, Foxy, there we go. I was blind for a moment. So, yeah, so, yeah that's that's the chunk they're taking out there with the fillets. And then that's that's super annoying. So yeah. Yeah, well, let's just pull that up to the other window. Go back and forth. It is really nice that they at least give you the. Sixteen point five to the best or past the bezel. Okay. So I will dismiss that, but uh, well, I have the real thing here. Why don't I just measure? Thank you, calipers. About three point five is one. Put it out. Oh my gosh! Stupid, stupid, stupid calipers. You are so shot. I'm so donating you to the negative 40. What the heck? Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Come on. Yeah, negative 13. Stop it, bed. Stop it. Watch. Okay, fine. Here we got 13.6 and let's pull 13.7 okay so I want to do it I want to control Z that and say 13 and then I'm just going to make another dimension which is going to be inferred as driven since it's uh, going there and now I'm going to accept that but then I'm also going to make that, and again, this is why this is so superior to SolidWorks. So 16.7, 16.5 according to this. And thankfully I made this all parametrically driven, so that nicely scaled and was centered. How did I... was that explicitly set? Okay. I'm, I'm not even... whatever. I'm just going to have that inherited and not going to bother trying to get so detailed. And yet here I am diving into detail. Okay, then the convex surface, what am I doing there? By the way, I don't even know what that... Let's finish. So, add some things. How is that? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so that is the true back of the camera, and then it's building up the circuit board afterwards and stuff. Okay, so in this case, I don't want you to do that. I want you to, for building up the circuit board, everything else, uh, blast, that camera is going to be inherited from the circuit board, isn't it? Not the camera, the uh, connector. 
How much work do I have to do here? Uh, let's just fast forward to some point to see what we're dealing with. Yes, yes, I know, I broke something. What did I break? The revolution is mad at me. I don't know which one it is. Oh, it's the glass. So that connector. Uh, this is more work than I need to put into this. Uh, why the heck am I spending so much time? Um, what was this? I have no idea what that revolution was. This controls either that and go back. Okay. Okay, now I'm going right back to the fatigue mode. I'm going right back to, I don't want to deal with this. Chocolate covered canopy. <sighs> Again, this is a lot of work. Let's quickly visit what I'm trying to do. So I want to just make a new sketch. Standard and create. So what am I trying to accomplish? Ultimately I'm going to have some kind of a canopy model that I will have made. And uh, let's select the appropriate axis of symmetry. One airplane, east, north, down, northeast, up. X, Y, Z, which is east, north, up. Yeah, so that's going to be that plane. Go to that. So, yeah, and I don't want to set this as not moving as forward. And this shall be as forward and then as forward. Okay, so now with the X is in the plane. So we're going to have a canopy. So I'm going to draw a notional canopy there. And then it has that sharp line there, and the jaw, and the downwards jaw, and the canopy floor. And I'm just looking at it back and forth. There we go, that's that's our canopy right there. Our canopy tray. And just to be a little bit more simple to that. So I want to have a camera up top. So the camera I'm going to represent with a rectangle. So here's our camera. And I'll put on a smaller rectangle. And then I'm going to obsessively, compulsively, actually. Uh, I haven't even drawn anything to scale. It doesn't make sense to even mention that. Point being is that I want to have all the servos buried underneath the canopy. So the whole point for 3D printing the canopy, or at least getting the canopy completely captured 3D wise, is so that way I can design a very nicely meshing mechanism that is going to live underneath the canopy surface or underneath our little mine. So that would represent one servo and there's going to be a second servo probably stacked on top of that servo or it's going to be back behind that servo adjacent or somewhere like that. And then basically have two servos. And I'd wanted to do some kind of fancy mixer 
mixer system, the mechanical mixer that would have had the two servos act sort of like a V-tail mechanism that you have to both of them rotate at once and the, cam the camera pushes down and if you have you rotate that posing each other then that makes the camera only pan left or right but then I decided that was a stupid mechanism. It really is just going to be traditional pan tilt with one servo only driving pan and another servo driving tilt. So one of these servos is going to drive the 180 degree look around capability and then the other one is going to drive the up down look capability. And that's going to be driven by a linkage of some kind. So let's just make a motional center of the servo. And then from the center of the servo we have some kind of a linkage. And that goes up to some kind of linkage up there. And that, if I articulate that with a simple point arc, So that's going to be just about roughly where that goes, and then with the center rotation. And this is going to require the hardware too. I'm going to have to have hardware. You know, if I were really lazy, if I really wanted to just get things done as fast as possible, I can skip the custom pan tilt head for now, and I could just mount a regular servo on top of the canopy that only does pan. That's what I did with the former Cali sailplane from four years ago that I crashed into the side of the mountain. That one was only pan, and panning was fine. I didn't have to have full tilts up and down. It, there were a lot of instances though where I wished I'd be able to pan and tilt, and just to have the camera look in all directions. Also, well, to justify having a mechanism that fancy, I'd have to have a run cam split. Proxier doesn't have a proper split. Do they? Let's let's indulge. FPV cameras, action cameras. What are your action cameras over here? Okay, so it's their GoPro clone is what it is. But uh, there is a Oh, they do have their split run cam split competitor the mix SBFS white and bridge FPV camera. That's what I'd ultimately mount on the gimbal. To have something that's as beautiful and be able to record all of that. And then, what would I do with this, the mini? Would the mini be mounted next to that? Because these are well known to have issues where because it's a digital camera and it's being recorded locally, the NTSC generator on that sometimes barks. It's not as robust as a dedicated normal traditional NTSC only camera. Okay, but I'm trying to finish the sail plane. So I have to, going back to my list, there's a lot of things that are just going to have to wait for later. Covering it, what in my uh, covering job is probably the uh, cherry on top for this cycle. But I'm going to have to surrender the nice pan tilt design until a later date. And I probably should surrender the whole. drawing it up in Inkscape. Mm -hmm. Discharge wakes and the Raspberry Pi, those are going to have to wait for a later time. So does this mean I'm basically going to take 3D images of that canopy, then I'm going to wash it off, and I'm going to install it as usual. What, what am I going to do about the camera though? Am I going to cut into the canopy? Am I going to cut the canopy and mount a servo for only panning? I can reuse the pan servo from the Cali, the last pan servo. It only made it at 160 degrees. It only just barely made it to the left to barely make it to right. No ability to look behind. Hmm.
<sighs> this is unusual to not have the stream go exactly to the hour, but I think I'm just going to cancel the stream at this point. We're going to go get lunch. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna call this good. Ending stream. <laughs>